Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMar with the End Times Research Ministry. Today is the 11th of January, 2017. This is where I connect the dots between the warnings and the prophecies that are written to us from the Lord in the Bible and the current events. I'll connect those current events for you. Keep in mind that what I'm showing you today is just a very, very small glimpse of what the Lord has revealed to us for the last days. One of the first signs I want to cover today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. And here is where the Lord Jesus Christ tells Paul that in the last days, when they're calling for peace and safety, that would be the time period that sudden destruction would be coming. Now, in our generation, the generation who saw the rebirth of the nation Israel, because Paul was actually referring to what was happening in Israel for the future. And there's no doubt that the Israelis have been calling for peace and safety along with the Palestinians for years. It goes all the way back to Jimmy Carter when he finally got Anwar Sadat and Mahakam Begin to sit down and talk about a peace process which Egypt did sign. And of course, right after the signing of that peace agreement, Sadat was murdered because he signed a peace agreement with Israel. And ever since then, there's been collisions between the Palestinians, the Arabs, and the Israelis. And just currently now, you see that ISIS has gotten themselves into the picture. And just as the Psalm 83 spelled out for us, if you read that psalm, it talked about a confederacy of nations coming together saying that they were going to destroy the nation of Israel, so they make an attempt to go out and destroy Israel, which will not happen. Israel will not be completely destroyed. The Jerusalem Post had an article that I thought it was pretty interesting, and it is very telling. Let me bring you down to the headline. This was today's news on the 11th. Carry to attend Paris Summit on the Israeli-Palestinian Conflict. Take a look at the subtitle, which begins here. Israel is protesting the Paris Summit and has warned its attendees against setting out parameters for a two-state solution. If you've been following the peace process like I have for the last 39 years, you would have noticed that all the way from 1976 when Carter and Sadat and Begin got together, there has been major obstructions to the peace process. Mainly the ownership of East Jerusalem where the mosque is for the Muslims and, of course, where the first and the second temple stood for the Jews on the Temple Mount area. So this has been one of the worst contested areas in the world, and it still is today. And, of course, Zechariah told us that this was going to happen in the last days. Just read Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. So here we go again. We have Kerry, John Kerry, Secretary of State, who isn't going to get anything done, but what does he do? He goes over to Paris, and he's still, just in the last 10 days of the Obama administration, he's going to try to pull off something that they haven't been able to pull off for decades. And this trip to Paris is not going to work. It says, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry will travel to Paris for an international conference on Middle East peace organized by the French government, his staff has announced on Tuesday. In his final trip as secretary, Kerry will begin with a visit to Vietnam. He will then travel to Paris on the day of the summit, January 15th, followed by trips to London and Davos, Switzerland. Now, I find it very ironic that John Kerry 
who represents Barack Obama, has really had disdain for the nation in Israel. And just recently, they didn't veto a UN resolution against Israel. And this showed the true colors of the Obama administration. Now, there is no way that you're ever going to have peace or to come up with a peace plan unless Israel is involved. Take a look at what another section of this article says. Israel is protesting the Paris summit and has warned its attendees against setting out parameters for a two-state solution. Such an outcome to which conflict with the Palestinians can only come about through direct negotiation, says Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. While 70 nations, now this is important, I'll show you why. While 70 nations are sending envoys to the Paris summit, neither the Israelis nor the Palestinians will be represented. Somebody ought to tell Kerry, and somebody ought to tell these other 70 nations, how in the world are you going to have a peace when the two enemies who've rejected these different peace proposals for these many decades aren't even going to be involved in the peace process? It's just not going to happen. And when you go back and look at the prophecy, what does it say? They're going to make peace and there's going to be peace? No, it says while they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction is going to come. What is sudden destruction? It's war. Now, as I said, this is important. While 70 nations, and I'll show you why this is important. Now, in case you haven't read anything in the Bible, this is really important because it really shows what's taking place in our generation because it hasn't happened before. And for this information, take a look at the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, chapter 9. This is where the Lord reveals to us what the Antichrist is going to do. In verse 27, it says this, And he, of course, the he is, reference to the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with, look at this, many for one week. Again, I've said it before, if you do a study about Daniel in this chapter, you'll see that the week is actually a time period of seven years. But what I want to show you here is, it says he is going to confirm a covenant with many. Now, it doesn't say that he is going to make the covenant. It says that he is going to confirm the covenant with many. So there is going to be some type of an agreement that will be made. The Antichrist comes in, he steps in, he takes this agreement that's already established, and he'll confirm it. And this will take place at the beginning of the tribulation period, the last week that Daniel talks about that is allotted on the nation of Israel. See, God has chosen a time period to deal with the Israel to fulfill all prophecy. And the complete time period was a time period of 490 years. And the tribulation period is the end or the last seven years of that 490 years that God has destined to deal with the nation of Israel. So the bottom line is this. We had to see a group of nations come together to have this prophecy fulfilled. So maybe you don't know this, but it hasn't been until recently where we've had so many nations come together to try to figure out some way to get the Israelis and the Palestinians on the same page to make peace. So you have here 70 nations, and I believe with all my heart that this is no doubt the many nations that is pointed to in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And I'll tell you this, John Kerry is not the man who is going to be able to do this. Not at all. As a matter of fact, John Kerry won't even recognize that the Western Wall belongs to the Israelis. John Kerry is nothing but a burden to the Israelis, and he showed us through not vetoing the UN resolution that was just passed. A PJ Media has come up with some documentations for you. Look at the headline for this. John Kerry literally won't say the Western Wall is part of Israel. How in the world could Israel ever trust 
The United States, through the Secretary of State, John Kerry, to defend or put something together for the Israeli people when he won't even recognize or won't even say that the Western Wall is part of Israel. And this philosophy is completely rejected by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Listen to this. Do you regard the Western Wall in Jerusalem, the holiest site of Judaism, as occupied Palestinian territory? No, and I don't think we've ever referred to it as such, nor do the resolutions that have passed in the UN or prior references indicated uh, uh, something to that effect. Is the Western Wall part of Israel? I'm, that has, has to be resolved in the context of final status negotiations. It is the position of the United States that that is a religious site of particular criticality and importance to Israel, and that the current status quo with respect to those religious sites must be respected. So we respect Israel's position without, in effect, speaking yet to the issue of sovereignty, because that has to be resolved between the parties. Apparently, John Kerry doesn't know much about the history of Israel. Apparently, John Kerry doesn't know much about the first temple that stood on the Temple Mount. Apparently, John Kerry doesn't know too much about the second temple that stood on the Temple Mount in East Jerusalem. And it is, in fact, and always was, the holiest site for the Jewish nation. And it still is. But John Kerry won't say that the Western Wall, which is the last remaining part of that second temple, is connected to Israel at all. He dodged the bullet over and over again. So the only thing that Kerry has actually done was to help fortify the call for peace and safety and the destruction that will follow a process that completely fails. And so far for the Obama administration, of which John Kerry is part of, has been a complete and utterly failure. And it just shows you prophecies in the making. Now another thing to consider about the prophecy when they're calling peace and safety, sudden destruction will come. While John Kerry is going to make this Paris trip that won't really do anything for Israel, or the Palestinians for that matter, Israel is finding itself being attacked over and over again by the people he's supposed to be making a peace agreement with. Look at this article that also came out from the Jerusalem Post. This is actually yesterday's article on the 10th. IDF reveals increase of violent incidents across West Bank. You see a picture of the people they're supposed to be making peace with. There's going to be destruction before this Antichrist could ever come in and confirm any type of agreement. Figures by the IDF show a significant increase in the number of violent incidents in the West Bank in the past few months, indicating Israel may be in the midst of a worrisome trend. At a briefing held at the IDF's Judea and Samaria headquarters in Bayat Al on Tuesday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu acknowledged that Israel is on the cusp of witnessing serious regional developments. Now, for those of us who know Psalm 83, and that's the war against Israel, we know what these regional developments are leading to. It's leading to the fulfillment of that Psalm 83 war. So in nine days, President Barack Obama, along with John Kerry, and every one of the staff that really had disdain for the nation of Israel will be gone. And President-elect Donald Trump will take office on January the 20th. And as you can see from the article from the Jerusalem Post that came out November the 15th of 2016, it says Netanyahu will work with Trump on twin interests of, look at this, peace and security. The same exact thing that Jesus told Paul to look for in the last days. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he is looking forward to working with President-elect Donald Trump on many issues in the region. I look forward to working with President-elect Trump to further the twin interest of peace and security, he said. 
So once again, we're going to have another president who no doubt this time will fully support the nation of Israel and work on trying to come up with some kind of agreement that Israel and the Palestinians can live with. Now, if Donald Trump is successful, then what we should look for is a fulfillment of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, where the Antichrist will confirm whatever agreement, whatever covenant that he make, this Antichrist man will confirm that covenant. The bottom line, again, is this. We're on the road to fulfill the prophecies. The identical things that the Lord told us to keep on the watch for, we're seeing them pop up in the news on a daily basis almost now. So don't think it is one of those coincidences where you see peace and security as a warning from God, and then you keep seeing it in the news, peace and security. They've been working for this for a very long time, and there is no doubt they're going to finalize some kind of agreement, as I said, and that will be fulfilled by the Antichrist when he confirms whatever agreement or covenant that they make. Now, going back to the second part of the peace and security, when they talk about the destruction that will come while they're calling for this peace and security, take a look at this article that came out yesterday. January the 10th, 2017. 10 failed State Department plans for Mideast peace. There is a lot of wisdom in these Proverbs. Take a look at Proverbs 26, 11, where they quote it in this article. As a dog that returneth to his vomit, so is a fool that repeateth his folly. This is exactly what's happened in the peace process over these many years that I was talking about. And let me show you what they're reporting on. Now, the first one I found interesting, of course, this is number 10, and you'll see that this plan fell apart because the people, the Arabs, did not want Jews to return back to Israel. Assistant Secretary of State Henry Byrod was the spokesman for the 1954 U.S. proposal for Israel to severely restrict Jewish immigration from around the world because the Arab world consider Aleah threatening. A Jewish anti-Zionist group, the American Council for Judaism, helped shape Byrod's plan. Now, we know that that was going to be a complete failure without a question. Even before they sat down, we would have known that this was going to be a complete failure. And how could we have known the future on this? All you have to do is go to chapter 37 in the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament where God told us that Israel would be reborn again and the scriptures are loaded with prophecies showing us that the Lord was going to call the Jews from around the world to go back into the homeland in the last days. That is exactly what's happened. So the Boyd plan was destined to failure even before they sat down. Now, this Rogers plan that they talk about, that was a failure because of security issues. Golda Meir was the prime minister of Israel at that time, and they knew that if they pulled back from these pre-1967 lines, that Israel would be in security problems. You'll see the security and welfare of Israel would be in grave danger. So that plan failed. Now as we go through these failed plans, please take notice that Jesus told us in Mark 13, 8, for example, that the last day signs would happen as birth pangs. You see it, these are the beginning of birth pangs. And so we've been seeing the birth pangs of the failed peace process ever since Mahakam Beg and Jimmy Carter in Anwar Sadat. And they will continue until Antichrist shows up to fulfill the rest of the prophecies that haven't been fulfilled yet. So as we continue on now, these other attempts, but obviously failed peace agreements, you'll see how the birth pangs have come into fruition along the way. Then there was the Reagan plan. Now, this plan failed because this plan said that they wanted the Israelis to stop building their settlements. 
And this has been a major problem all the way from 1982 to 2016, and I'm sure that it's going to be a major issue again in 2017. Let me give you a little bit more of insight concerning these settlements. You see an article, Foundation for Middle East Peace Issue Settlements. The conscience of the international community is that Israeli settlements in territory it captured in 1967 are illegal, vomiting the terms of the Fort Geneva Convention. Israel disputes this judgment, contending that the Fourth Geneva Convention applies only to the occupation of territory of another sovereign state. The United States has never formally refuted the State Department's legal advisor's 1977 judgment that the settlements are indeed illegal. But in 1981, President Ronald Reagan stated that, in his opinion, the settlements were not illegal, and since that time, the United States has termed them unhelpful, unnecessarily provocative obstructions to peace or similar terms. After Israel's victory in the 1967 war, when it began its occupation of the West Bank, the Gaza Strip and Golan Heights, and the Sinai Peninsula later returned to Egypt as part of a peace deal between the two countries, Israeli citizens sometimes, with the help of the government, began establishing settlements in the newly occupied territories. By 2014, there were some 700,000 Israeli Jews living in settlements in the West Bank including East Jerusalem, where we see most of the problems and most of the major issues surrounding this holy city. Over the years, Israel has abandoned all of its settlements in the Sinai Peninsula, which was returned to Egypt in a peace agreement, and the Gaza Strip, and even a few in the West Bank. And still, that wasn't enough for the Palestinians to make peace with Israel. Just part and parcel for the birth pangs of these peace and safety talks. Again, remember the words of peace and security. Take a look at the last sentence here. It says, the Israeli cabinet unanimously rejected the plan as a serious danger to Israel's security. Then there was the Arafat first plan, and this failed in 1988. Now, there's something that's been very consistent since the Arafat first plan. And that was the Palestinians have been sitting down, supposedly talking about peace and safety, but all along during the peace processes that have failed, they were attacking the Israelis and nothing has changed. They're still doing it today. You will see it here. It says the U.S. Arafat relationship collapsed 17 months later when the PLO faction attempted to massacre Tel Aviv beachgoers. Then number six, the Clinton parameters. Now, in the 2000 peace talks, Israel was ready to give away just about everything. You'll see it says the plan call for a Palestinian state in 95% of the disputed territories, as well as the Palestinian sovereignty over the Temple Mount and other parts of eastern Jerusalem. Arafat rejected those terms. He could have had anything that he wanted, but he rejected it. He rejected it because he doesn't recognize the state of Israel. And just like it is today, the issue really isn't about peace and security. It's about trying to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. If they really wanted peace in the year 2000, that was the best time that they could have put something together to have peace and security. Now, as with many of the failed peace processes, the Temple Mount was also a major issue. And again, I refer back to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3, when it talked about Jerusalem being a burdensome stone. That's where the Temple Mount is, in the heart of Jerusalem, on that mount. Then there was the road map. That had to do with the Oslo Agreement in 1993. That also fell apart. And as you can see there, it says the roadmap was drafted by the State Department in 2002 and put forward by the Middle East Quartet, the United States, the U.S., European Union, and Russia the following year. It outlined a three-phase plan leading to creation of an independent Palestinian state. The plan fell apart 
when the Palestinian Authority, PA, failed to implement the Phase 1 requirement to disarm and outlaw all terrorist groups. Palestinians knew at that time, in 2002, if they dropped our arms, they could never destroy Israel. And the destruction of Israel was in the Palestinian Charter back then, and it still is. So you couldn't have a peace in 1993 or when they tried to put it together again in 2002. It was a failure. Then we come to number four, the Golan Plan. And this plan was a failure because what they wanted to do here is give land back the Golan Heights to Syria. See, there was an earlier war. Israel took this land over, and Syria has been wanting it back ever since. And Israel doesn't want to give that land away because it's a buffer zone between their nation and Israel. Again, security measures needed by the Israelis. And of course, as it says, the effort ended when the Syrian civil war erupted in 2011. And you had the Ross plans. I think it's very important that anyone who doesn't know the history about the call for peace and safety look and understand where it was in the, in the past and where we're going in the future. And this is why I'm taking the time to give you the breakdown of all these different plans that are leading, obviously, to the fulfillment of the call for peace and safety, the sudden destruction, and subsequently the Antichrist coming to confirm whatever covenant that they come up with. Now, the Ross plan, for example, as an advisor to the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Obama in 2009 through 2011, Dennis Ross pressured Israel to allow cement into Gaza, which was later used by Hamas, which is an enemy of Israel, to build tunnels. In articles and speeches since then, Ross has called on Israel to halt most construction in its portions of the disputed territory. Israel froze settlement construction for 10 months, but the PA did not reciprocate. So that fell apart. Then we come to the Kerry Plan. This five-year effort began with Obama's May 19th 2011 call for the Palestinian state based on the 1967 line and culminated in Secretary of State John Kerry's December 28, 2016 speech urging shared control of Jerusalem and a halt to construction even within existing settlements. Israel's leaders joined by Great Britain's Prime Minister said the Kerry plan was one-sided in its support of Palestinian positions and only paid lip service to the problem of Palestinian terrorism and incitement. And then we come down to the first one here, the divided Jerusalem plan. A U.S. ambassador to Israel in September 2000, Martin and Dickey first publicly urged Israel to share the governance of Jerusalem and its holy sites with the Palestinians. Now, his January 2017 New York Times op-ed in Dickey has urged the incoming Trump administration to push for dividing control of Jerusalem between Israel and the PA, which in Dickey contends would open the way to negotiation on other final status issues like the borders of a Palestinian state. Now, this plan may sound feasible, but there's major problems. Number one, it has nothing to do with the settlements, and that's been an issue all along. Number two, it doesn't say anything about the Palestinians actually recognizing and taking out of their charter the destruction of the nation of Israel. And until you can get those issues resolved, no peace agreement will be signed. Israel isn't going to sign an agreement with an enemy that wants to destroy them. And of course, there's the issue of the borders for a new Palestinian state. And the Palestinians want East Jerusalem as part of their borders. And what's in East Jerusalem? The Temple Mount, where the first, the second, and where we know that the third temple that the Lord warned us about will be built on the Temple Mount, which is actually owned by Israel, but it is run by Jordan. And of late, we've seen a lot of 
demonstrations and violence on the Temple Mount because the Jews are finally becoming aggressive and want to pray just like the Palestinians on the Temple Mount area where the second temple used to be. So plan after plan has failed. And now we have a new president. Let's keep on the watch as the Lord commanded us to do and see what happens. Now, before I sign off for today, I want to connect another one of the prophecies that the Lord told us to watch for concerning, again, the last days. And there's two places that you could read, and I posted them for you. One is Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, and Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. Now, Hosea chapter 4 talks about the birds, the fish, and the animals dying in the last days. In the book of Revelation, chapter 11, the Lord Jesus is talking to us about destroying the earth. And if you've been watching the news, watching the amount of pollution in our waterways, in our oceans, it's incredible. And people wonder why mass die-offs of fish and animals and birds are taking place. So what I am doing for you right now is, since we're in the new year, I want to give you all of the reports that have come in so far since January the 1st of 2017. I won't be talking. I'll just have drop downs. And I'm just doing this so that you can see for yourself that the warnings that God gave to us are already here. Now, this is, again, very limited information. But if you want all of the information for the past five years of every single account, Go over to my book, the End Times Research Ministry website, click on the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, and you'll have in your hands today for free access to every single one of those reports. Jesus has given you a message today. Question is, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to just toss it off or are you going to share it with other people? We're here to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here to bring others into the kingdom before it's too late. What are you doing for the kingdom? This isn't a condemnation. This is hopefully an encouragement. Now is the time to act for Christ if you really love him. Let's take a look at the news.
This may be your first initial time looking at these articles about either the birds, the fish, or the animals dying. But let it be known, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these reports over the past five or six years. Take a look at them and get a good idea what's really happening out there as our world is being polluted and the weather is beginning to change, having a devastating effect on wildlife and fish in the ocean. One of the other prophecies the Lord told us to look for, he warned us in also in Matthew, Luke, and Mark about the earthquakes in many places that were going to take place along with the great earthquakes. Here's a report that came out January the 8th about a rare magnitude 5.8 quake that rattled Canada's far north. Today, another major quake. Solomon continues to be hit by aftershocks. And today's quake was magnitude 6.4. New Zealand is another nation that's been hit repeatedly by these big quakes. They were hit with another one today of a magnitude 5.1. As you can see here, rattles central New Zealand again. The Lord did say in various places, and that means places where they normally don't occur. But, for example, in the United States, for example... Oklahoma has been shaking like crazy. In this article that just came out, no damage reported after three earthquakes hit North Oklahoma, and that's January the 11th of 2017. That concludes the evidence that I want to show you connecting Bible prophecy with current events. I pray that you would come back and learn more, and hopefully not just learn, but receive what the Lord is showing us by accepting the Son, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. I'm asking as many of you who have been watching my YouTube videos and coming over to my website to please let people know what I'm doing and to make sure that they understand everything that they're going to get from my ministry comes absolutely for free with no strings attached. I don't want anything but to preach the word of the Lord Jesus Christ and to get people ready for his second coming. This is Frank DeMore with the End Times Research Ministry. God bless.